John Anderson changed the way we look at politics. He changed the way we think about the dominance of political parties. He changed the way we discuss elections and voting. Today, he continues to remind us that it is ideas rather than ideology that can and should be at the heart of political discourse. John was born in Rockford, Illinois on February 15, 1922. While attending the University of Illinois in 1943, he enlisted in the Army, where he served as a staff sergeant in the U.S. Field Artillery to the war's end. After earning law degrees from the University of Illinois and Harvard, John served overseas on the staff of the United States High Commissioner for Germany. He corresponded with State Department photographer Kiki Machakos, who, after some, quote, innocent blackmail, accepted a marriage proposal over telegraph. They were wed in 1953 and over the years had five children. In 1956, John was elected state's attorney in Winnebago County, Illinois. In 1960, he was elected to represent Illinois' 16th congressional district. He served 20 years in Congress, including a decade as the House Republicans' conference chair. Though in an influential position of leadership within his party and a masterful member of the House Rules Committee, Anderson showed an independent streak that sometimes riled his colleagues. He was an early backer of campaign finance reform, opposed the bombing of Cambodia, and during Watergate was among the first Republicans to speak out against the executive overreaching of President Nixon. In 1968, he cast a deciding vote for the Open Housing Act and later played a pivotal role with Mo Udall in conserving Alaska's wilderness and landmark legislation. In 1979, John launched a campaign for president, drawing attention before the primaries for his remark that the only way to balance the budget, raise military spending, and cut taxes was with mirrors. Spurred on by support from across the spectrum, he made the bold decision to launch an independent bid. He was endorsed by a wide range of luminaries and institutions, from author Gore Vidal to the editors of The New Republic, with particular adulation in the panels of Gary Trudeau's Doonesbury comic strip. Time Magazine said of him, The U.S. has rarely seen a presidential candidate like John Anderson, who seems more interested in ideas than in power. In his campaign, he was a champion of U.S. energy independence, the Equal Rights Amendment, and a balanced budget. His proposals that we add a 50 cent per gallon gas tax and reduce Social Security payroll taxes now look particularly prophetic through modern eyes. John earned a place on the ballot in all 50 states, debated Ronald Reagan before a national audience, and won nearly 6 million votes. His candidacy paved the way for more independent runs at all levels of office and broke new ground for those seeking fair access to the ballot and debates. Given how polls early on showed him above 20%, we'll never know what might have happened with a fair electoral system designed to accommodate voter choice. John Anderson continues to use his intellect and his passion to educate, reform, and inspire. He practiced law, taught at universities across America, and served as president of the World Federalist Association. He currently teaches constitutional law at Nova Southeastern University. In Fairvote's first year in 1992, he signed on as chair of its advisory board. Since 1996, he has been Fairvote's chairman, at the forefront of the movement to realize democracy's fullest potential through meaningful reforms such as instant runoff voting, proportional representation, cumulative voting, and a national popular vote for president. As the Harvard Law Bulletin put it, he was reformed before reform was cool, and he's got plenty of fight in him. But John Anderson can be described best through his own words. All elements in our society have got to be listened to, he said. Their voices have got to be heard. That means we've got to look at the laws of democracy and evolve and develop a structure that is more responsive than the current structure. In 2005, John said, Americans want and deserve a bold, pragmatic vision for free and fair elections here at home, bridging the so-called red state, blue state divide. We must put America's democracy back in the hands of the voters where it belongs. Writing in 1999 about his larger vision for all people around the world, he told us, we must urge full participation in the global community, seeing the world as the first astronauts saw it years ago. One world whose political lines fade in the face of such issues as global warming, population growth, fair trade, conflict resolution, and nuclear proliferation. And to quote him once more, What drives me is the realization that there are a lot of people like me with whom I can make a common bond and make common cause, to try to have an influence even though I am not an elected official. I've still got to do something. I've got to keep thinking. And so he does today. On its 15th anniversary, Fairvote proudly honors John Bayard Anderson.